In the Loft is back. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yes. Glad to be here. You know, that's what we used to say in churches, you know, like whenever it's time for testimony service. <laughs> well, I'm just glad to be here. <laughs> that was the testimony. That was th- That's how they, they would it. start. And I love the old timers. <laughs> but I was like, wow. I mean, did you plan on dying before you got here? I mean, I'm not well, just glad. I'm glad to be here, but really... God's greater than just, well, <laughs> I lived another day. I made it. I made it. I made you know, it to Sunday. I, I woke up. You know, I'm thankful for those things. Don't don't get me wrong. But, you know, <laughs> but it's sometimes like. sometimes it's embarrassing. Well, sometimes well, people. How how wimpy. Yeah. Some, <laughs> sometimes people think that they just underestimate God's ability. Yeah. I mean, and you know, we think. And they overestimate the Their devils. trials, which was and, just, I had a little headache this morning or something. Right. Well, that's why the scripture <laughs> says, magnify the Lord with me. That means oh, make him bigger, not your problems. Preach that. Well, I made it through another day. The devil was after me all week long. You oh, know, can't take We it. had testimony services really made you feel like you needed to just <laughs> jump straight to the altar service. They were some of the most... <laughs> now, this is... I'm, I've am i been in church since before I was born, so I mean, I'm 45 years old, so... I have a pretty good memory of back when I was four and five years old. So we're talking 45 years or 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And this is how, you know, people had church. Well, they basically glorified all their problems all week long and called it a testimony because they survived it. They survived until Sunday. Made it through another week. I'm thinking, (laughs) well, you know, the depressing thing is now you're facing another week in front of you. (laughs) It was so, yeah, like eventually we had to kind of, be careful of the quote testimony services. Right. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. We still do testimonies yes. when they're real testimonies. When they're real. When yes. they are reports of victory and not. <laughs> well, I'm just glad to be here. Made it through another day. Well, what what it used to be was like ninety percent of the testimony was uh, uh, the complaining and yeah. the problems and the trouble, and then yeah. well, maybe ninety five percent, and then the last five percent was. But praise God, we made it through. Yeah. And then and then it turned it turned into competition. Who had the worst week? Who had the worst <laughs> week? Whose problems were bigger? <laughs> Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. I mean, testimony services, if if there were some of the writers of country music, all they need to do is go, <laughs> go to, to church. Go to some of the testimony <laughs> services we used to have. Wow, they could get material A for material. weeks and days and <laughs> There's no end to the country songs that could be written by the quote testimonies. So yes. thank God we are, um, you know, we're past that to real testimonies <laughs> because the Bible says we're made an overcomer by yes. our testimony, and there was nothing overcoming about those. I really don't know if those t- uh, qualified as a testimony by the definition of a testimony. No. no. <laughs> if we overcome by the word of our testimony, so yeah, might anyway. need to work on that. I've heard of, of places, some churches that actually. If somebody w- wants to give a testimony, they have to go learn how to give a testimony. And I don't think that's a bad idea. No, it's, it's <laughs> because not. Because they even may have really great intentions and it just comes out all wrong, you know? Go, yeah. So yeah, they're, sometimes they're not you have dri- to. They're not driving the bus. Yeah, yeah. They're riding in the back and <laughs> end up somewhere they didn't mean to be. <laughs> Good uh, way to put it. I've, I've seen it all in church. Um, we want... Uh, this is going way back, and if you're listening to us and you're not from a Pentecostal church, just jump in somewhere. Yeah, you'll you'll catch on. Okay, just go Sunday to a Pentecostal church. And this doesn't go, oh. happen in current Pentecostal churches. This we're going back. Probably I was under ten years old. So just a couple of years. And in another church <laughs> in another state, east of here. Okay. Not very far, but it's it's east of Oklahoma. That's all I'm going to say. All right. That ought to tell you what you need to know. Uh-huh. There was a man who stood up and requested a prayer for his wife who had a shopping demon. <laughs> Dead have serious. You, have you ever requested that for me? <laughs> no, but I I used to think that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And now that I've been married to you for a while, I'm not sure. <laughs> but there's no such thing as a shopping demon. But uh, anyway, we've well. we've seen it all. We have. We could tell. We, we should do a whole all. podcast about church stories because they are endless, absolutely endless. 
endless. And, you know, when you get those urgent prayer requests, you know, and, and it's like somebody says, pray for so-and-so right now. They got stung by a bee. And I'm not saying like some people, you know, are allergic so they could die if they get stung by a bee. But I'm just saying like just a normal little. Right. They got There's, stung by a bee. I'm thinking, okay, if people on, in the underground churches are going, are you kidding me right now? Yes, I know. I know it's, uh, <laughs> it's a different world. Our last podcast, we talked about Moses and boy, I can't imagine some of the things that he had to deal with. Oh, bless him. I know. I think about uh, him a lot. It's fun. We, I, have, I have sympathy for him. Yes. We enjoy it. We love it. We get great stories out of it. And really you have to laugh. Oh yeah. And and we don't laugh at anyone. We laugh with it other people hey, people laugh at me and it's all and right that's I exactly I, li- I like laughing at you i know you're uh, pretty funny it's fine yeah. yeah yeah so anyway what are we going to talk about today well i read i okay so here's the deal i started in romans at the beginning of the year and let me just plug this so i always want to do the read the bible in a year thing and i usually get a little off track because you know, when you get those schedules that people make up, if you read, you know, two chapters in Genesis and one chapter in Matthew on this day and the next day you read, you know, and it schedules it out for you. But I, I love doing that, but I also like to skip around. So I get a little, you know, I do it real uniform for a while and then I'm like, I got to skip around. Well, anyway, so I'm just going to give you all this little hint. When I was in Bible college at Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas, um, Mom Lindsay, she, her husband was the president of uh, Christ for the Nations, and he had already passed away when I was there, but she was still there. She was an amazing little woman and fiery, fiery little woman. Okay, so she always told us to read three chapters a day, Monday through Saturday, and then on Sunday you read five chapters and you'll get through the Bible in a year. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to read specific, you know, like you can keep track of what you're reading but anyway three chapters every day and five on Sunday and you'll get through the Bible in a year easily all right so anyway I was reading in Romans and I I had just been thinking because you know it's the first of the year still the first of 2021 and everyone knows we've been through um, some crazy things since last year 2020 and I mean it's still it's just still you wake up in a different world every day. And we as Christians have prayed and we've fasted and we've believed. And it seems like, you know, um, things, everything takes a different turn. Like you just, everything's so unexpected and so different. And so I just was thinking, okay, so when you're praying for a specific thing in anything in your life, And you're really, really praying and and believing for one specific thing. And it looks like every single door, every single path, every single way that it could possibly happen is closed or gone. No other um, options, no other remedies. You know, what's funny is, you know, when I pray, a lot of times I have to watch myself and I even tell the Lord, Lord, I'm probably helping you out here so you don't have to do it my way. But just in case you needed a suggestion, oh, here's a hint. Yeah, here's a hint. I could I could see this happening, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so when we come to the end of our remedies and our ideas for how God could work something out, um, is that when we stop believing? You know, this question came to mind. When do we stop believing? And, you know, I'm thinking, okay, God, never. You believe God and you believe God and you believe him. And when it all looks impossible and all hope is gone and lost and nothing's going the way that you think it should go, you just keep believing. That's it. And so I was reading in Romans and I'm going to read a few verses, and then we're going to go back and talk about this. But I just think this is so powerful. Romans four seventeen says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, talking to Abraham, in the presence of him who believed, 
God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. I love that right there. Right. Calling those things that don't even exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed that so so that he became the father of many nations. So I'm going to read that again. Who contrary to hope, like there was no hope left. There was nothing to hope for. There was nothing that you could see that brought hope. He in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. That's what God said over Abraham. Yep. And verse 19, and not being weak in faith, praise God for that. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And I love this and being fully convinced fully convinced that what he had promised, what God had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Isn't that amazing? Right. So Abraham got a promise from God and he was a hundred years old and God was saying, you're going to be the father, father of many nations. And verse 19, go back to that. It says not being weak in faith. Now, our faith in the last nine months has been tested. Uh, not just you and I, but Christians. Right. It's always, it's just really fun to talk about faith until you really need it. Yeah. It's fun to say, easy. I have faith. It's easy. It's, you know, something we can just cliche say, oh yeah, I have faith until we really, really need it. Because Americans, you know, have plan A, B, C, D, and E. And then if that doesn't work, then they can move on to God and really having faith in God, right? Right. So Abraham didn't have plan A, B, C, and D. He, he had God. That was it. And he was not weak in his faith, it says. He did not consider his own body already dead, nor did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. So God's saying, you're going to be a father, he didn't look around. He did not consider that he was too old to have children. And he did not consider that Sarah's womb was dead. There was nothing there. There was no way for those two elderly people to make a baby. Right. It was over. No, those days were long, long gone. So Abraham could have looked at that and said, how in the world this is not going to happen? This, this doesn't exist. Remember in, in verse 17, God who gives life to the dead and calls things which do not exist yeah. as though they did. I mean, we are talking absolutely impossible situations. And Abraham chose not to consider the impossibility. Right. Because there's a moment um, where possible ends or let's put it this way, natural ends and supernatural begins. So good. There's a line. Yeah, and so come on. there's a line where there's possible and then there's impossible and you cannot exist in one or the other. And things that exist in the span of possibility do not enter into impossibility. Say that again. Okay, so... Whatever thoughts you have, is it possible that when we get done here, you and I can go eat at our favorite restaurant? It's entirely possible. Sure. We just make that decision and go do it. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that when we finish, that we can be in, I don't know, the best uh, Japanese restaurant in Japan in two or three hours? That's not possible. No. Sounds good because we love Japanese food. Yeah. But it's not possible. Right. So you you have um when you when you're speaking of impossibility, why it doesn't do any good to plan to factor in things that well, we're gonna go to Japan in a few minutes, so let's go ahead and you know, think about is it gonna be warm or is it gonna be cold over there? How do we prepare ourselves? It's stupid to try to factor in anything in 
what's possible mixed with what's impossible. Yeah. So we can't take That's right. We can't take, you know, the the same thought processes in possibility and move them to the realm of impossibility. When we move into the realm of impossibility, we're talking about somebody needs to or, or a couple is going to conceive a child when they are well past the years of conceiving a child. This yes. is impossible. Impossible. So to try to figure out how we're going to get to Japan and eat the food is just a waste of time. If we're going to have to be there in two or three hours, it's not happening. So to try to figure out how are we going to have this baby when we're this old, it's not going to make sense either. Right. So that's a waste of time. That's a waste of time to try to figure it out. Yeah. So what we have to do, quit taking the, the thoughts of what's possible and taking that same thought process into what's impossible because it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't. So you, in other words, you can't figure God out. No, that's you right. Can't, you will never go to God and pray for something that's impossible and leave with an explanation of how God's going to do it. Yeah, that's so good. You have to leave with a knowledge of knowing that he's God and he can do it, so he will do it because it's in his will to do it and it's in his power to do it. And the scripture says he won't withhold any good thing from us. And if he said he would do it, he will. He will. Says his promises are yes and amen. Right. So the faith comes in our walk. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So therefore, Mm -hmm. our actions after we pray is our faith in manifestation. You walk in a way with worry, concern, and fear, or did you leave that with God and you're walking away in confidence knowing it's going to be all right because God has it, and I let him have handle the impossible god doesn't even move in the realms of possible as far as far as okay i mean the the bible says a workman is worthy of his hire so it's up to god to uh do what he's supposed to do and it's up to us to do what we're supposed to do right so does god have the ability to just give me everything and I don't have to work for anything. Well, he has the ability, but he's not going to do that. Yeah. Because what he put in my power to do, I have a responsibility to do because I have the responsibility to do within, with the works of my hands, what's possible and what's impossible. I got to leave to God. So am I supposed to work and, 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 and provide for my family and do what I'm supposed to do and, and pay my bills and, and, and follow, you know, the, this journey of life and do these things. Yeah. I do what's possible because God gave me the ability to do it and you and anyone else. But I don't try to be God and say, okay, God, now here's how you take care of this, you take care of this, and you take care of this. The right. Bible says make your petitions known to him. Even if it's an impossible petition, make it known and then let him do it. Yes, and he is the God of the impossible. That's right. So quit being afraid of impossible mountains, impossible fights, impossible um circumstances whether it's in your own life or on a bigger scale and things that you're praying and believing for you can't consider i love how it says that he didn't consider so it didn't consume abraham's mind no he didn't sit there and dwell on the fact and it was a fact right that he was beyond making a baby and she was beyond carrying a baby in her womb her womb was dead they were beyond it being possible for them to have a baby, yet God was saying, you're going to be the father of many nations. So, you know, a lot of people, including myself, I'd be going, okay, well, maybe maybe we're supposed to adopt a baby. Yeah, <laughs> making an excuse. Yeah. So you're, so you're making bringing, a plan. You're bringing it back to possibility. to possibility. Yes. And so, you know, you could see where Abraham and Sarah may, may have, you know, or could have. They didn't. Right. The Bible says they didn't do this, but they could have said, maybe if we just, you know, adopt a baby or have a surrogate or, you know, figure out a way on our own terms to make God's promise come to pass. Right. We, we do that, don't we? We try to figure out ways to make what he has promised us come to pass in our own power. Right. But I love it that this scripture is talking about when Abraham and Sarah were at the end of themselves, there was no way that they uh, could happen. make this happen, what God had promised. So they just r- had to fully believe God. And verse 20 says... I was going there. Okay, go ahead. You're stealing my, I'll let you're you stealing go. my point. 
<laughs> go ahead. I'm going to let you go. I'll read it in King James. You you have um, new King the James. new King James. So yeah. we'll compare the two. Okay. But 20 says, he okay. staggered not at the promise of God. I love that term. I he, do too. He That's staggered good. not at the promise of God. How many times do we hear and read the promises of God and go, that'll never happen? Yeah. We, not, we might not say it, but we think it. How many times yeah. do we hear the promises of God or the you, you get a word from God or you mm-hmm. in a church service and and you know you you whether God speaks in your spirit or through someone else a prophetic word is released and you yeah what's possible you believe yeah but what's impossible you kind of stagger at I all love the things that you can think immediately in your mind okay I could, oh, yeah. I could make this happen yes 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 that and really requires no faith though does it no no you can it, make it happen and we don't want to get into this, but there's the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and the differences and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes, you know, we receive a word and it's and it's like a guidance to us. Yeah. Yeah, I know that that's that bears witness in my spirit. I know I'm supposed to do this, and that was just confirmation. Yes. But then sometimes there's that word that it's like, wow, how is this going to happen? Only God can mm-hmm. do this. Yeah, I love that. And and at that moment, it says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Through unbelief. That's the key right um, there. And... This 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 is I don't want to get go ahead and do your thing because I well I was just I want to do this one part okay I was just gonna say the New King James says he did not waver yeah I like that at the promise so his his faith was not shaken or wavered even though the promise looked impossible and was in mm-hmm. fact it was impossible in in uh the natural realm, it was completely impossible. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. And, you know, I think about the only time that Jesus, when he was on the earth, when he was walking on the earth doing miracles, the only time that he wasn't able to perform all the miracles he wanted to perform was when they had unbelief. Right. That was the only time. the only time. And this is what jumped out at me when I read that. It says he staggered not at the promise of unbelief. When I think of someone staggering, I think of, uh, we live on the, we've said many times on the lake here in Eufaula and going down to what's called the cove here in town. And it's basically, oh, it's where there's hundreds and hundreds of, of boats that are there all summer long and houseboats. And it's kind of the party place. It's where right. people gather 4th of July holiday weekends and stuff. We well, can go down there on about any given Saturday night in the summer, you know, July, any summer Saturday night, and I marvel at watching people stagger down the road because they're drunk on whatever they've been, you know, drinking or partying, and you know they're just out of their minds, you yeah. know, looking like a fool, looking stupid. Um, sometimes you'll even I remember one time I was driving down there and there was a dude staggering that he he just fell over in the ditch and he just kind of had this idea or this kind of this look on his face like. Well, I'm just going to sit here because I can't walk, <laughs> you know, and I yeah. think that's when I think of staggering. I mm-hmm. think of that. You're struggling mm-hmm. to walk. Well, he, he mm-hmm. here it says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. When you think of someone staggering like that, I think of someone drunk or that just becomes so full and intoxicated with whatever. Here it says he staggered not the promise of God through unbelief. In other words, what it's being saying, what it's saying here is he didn't get drunk on unbelief. That's so good. And we do the same yeah, thing. We right. get so full of unbelief that we can't believe God to heal a, Ooh, a common cold good. or a, a you know a, a a headache because you slept wrong. And we want God to do the impossible, but we don't have Come enough. On. We don't have enough room for faith. Yeah. See, this is it. You're either going to be full of faith or full of unbelief, unbelief, but you can't have half and half. Yeah. But once you're full of unbelief, there's no more room for faith. Yeah. There's no more room to believe. And so it says he did not get drunk, and this is my own interpretation. Okay. He didn't get drunk on unbelief because of the promise. He wasn't so full of unbelief yes. that, that he, you know, couldn't couldn't um receive the promise. But it says that he was strong in his faith, giving strength, glory yes. to God. He, it, mine says, but was strengthened in faith. Yeah. So he didn't stagger. Like you said, you know, when people get intoxicated and their legs are weak and they're staggering, he right. was not staggering in unbelief. He had a foundation yes, to stand on. That's so good, babe. Good job. 
<laughs> That's a good revelation. You can, li- he was you can listen to the podcast. Mike. I will. You I love money. that. That's so good. But he was strengthened. His, And you think of their legs getting weak and staggering, but he was strengthened. His right. legs were strong. He was solid he enough. Stand. And that's the thing. In if faith. we're not, this is, oh, how many promises of God mm. do we miss because we don't have oh, a foundation man. under us to receive it? Man, that's so good. How many promises of God do we let just fly away and go wow. over our head because we don't have enough faith? This is what happened mm. when the disciples were in the boat and they were so full of unbelief because they got their eye on the storm that they, one, one interpretation in the Gospels, in one of the Gospels says they would have missed, Jesus oh. would have passed them by. Would they passed missed. Them by. They would have missed the promise. But something. one radical person named Peter said, wait a minute, you know? Yeah. He's walking out there. I want to walk walk out there with him. Yes. And, you know, it's just, it's it's sad to see that we do it to ourselves. We fill ourselves with unbelief through, you know, media, social media, uh, through the cares of this world if you're if you're not if you don't isolate yourself to be with god yeah you're going to fill up with unbelief that's right and you know just this week i heard the lord just saying to me turn off the chatter and let my spirit speak to you and let my spirit lead you and you know in order to hear that still small voice of the holy spirit we have to turn off every other voice right and we can't we cannot afford to do this today we cannot afford to get our information, our direction, our uh, the things that we think about from TV, from entertainment, from media, from uh, social media, from the news, God forbid, right. from the news. Uh, we can't get all of that guidance and we can't let it fill us because if we do, it drowns out the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yep. But God is just really impressed on me to tune in so much more, turn off the chatter, turn off what I have to turn off so that I can hear him and be directed completely by him. I don't need anyone else to tell me. I don't need the, any of the secular anything to lead me or guide me or tell me what's going on. I've got to lean into the Holy Spirit more than ever and hear his voice because then... Right. We don't get filled with unbelief and we don't stagger in unbelief right. because of what we hear on the outside. Our our ears are totally tuned in mm-hmm. to the Holy Spirit. And then we are strengthened in our faith. Right. Because we can't the Bible says it is impossible, impossible can't do it. to please God without faith. Right. That's impossible. That's scary. Yes, it is. Yes, it when is. When you think about it. And when you think, you know, Okay, I don't believe anymore. I, I'm not seeing what I think I should see. Uh, it looks absolutely impossible. You know, Mary and Martha, their their brother Lazarus was in the tomb for four days. He was yes. dead for four days, sealed up. It's not stinking, possible. rotting. It's not possible. Rotting flesh. It is absolutely impossible. They could not see a way. If Jesus, if you had only come a little sooner. Yep. Well, Jesus. He doesn't have to come in our time frame, and he doesn't have to come when it looks like like there's still a chance. When Lazarus is, he's not breathing anymore, but he's still warm to the touch. So just maybe, just maybe, um, Jesus can show up now and heal him and bring him back to life. No, he was dead in the tomb for four days, right. so it looked absolutely impossible. impossible. Abraham and Sarah were well beyond their childbearing years. Her, it says, her womb was dead. Abraham's body was dead. His ability to have children was dead. But verse 21, can we go on to there? Yep, yep. Verse 21, he sa- it says, And being, this is what I love, fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. So if God promises something to us, and there are so many promises. I wish I knew the number in the Bible of the promises to the believers. And then when God promises you things through uh, prophecy, word of knowledge, whatever it may be, if he promises it, he is fully able to perform it. But we have to be what? We have to be fully convinced. That is where our faith stands. Fully convinced just because God said it. Not because of what I see, not because of what I'm hearing, not because of what I'm experiencing. Yeah. None of that matters. Mm-mm. None of it matters. A- Abraham did not consider all of those things that said, this is impossible. Right. It's too late. You're too old. It's impossible. There's no way. 
yada, yada, yada. There are all those things that will come at you, but you have to be fully convinced that what God has promised you, he is a hundred percent able to perform it and he will. Yeah, that's exactly right. 8,810 is uh, the estimated um, promises in the Bible, 7,487 of them being made by God to humankind, straight from him to us. That's a lot of promises. That's a lot of promises. And he's never failed on one of them. Never. He's never, never um, has he failed, never has he lied. He's not a man that he can lie. That's right. So we have to stand on the promise. And his promise is promises of (laughs) impossibility. And, you know, sometimes we get to a place where it's so easy to believe the lies of the enemy Yes. To believe what's not true, and it's so hard to believe the promises of God, which are true. That's right. And so the lies, the devil's lies are always possible. You're gonna oh, have yeah. a uh, you're gonna have a, a a car accident. You're gonna you know your family members gonna get there's gonna be tragedy come to your family, uh, financial ruins coming to you. You're gonna lose your you're job. Gonna lose you're gonna lose your job. You're gonna get a job. You're not, you're, all these these are yeah. all these are all possible things. Very possible. Because that's all the devil can do. That's right. Is he can only exist impossible. But God, he operates in the realm of impossible. Impossibility. And so when that's he said, by his stripes we're healed, that's not possible right. in, 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 in this natural. flesh, in the natural. But with God, by his stripes we're healed. Yes. And we're covered by his blood, and we're forgiven, and we're free, and we're righteous, and we're holy, and we're saved from a devil's hell, and all these things are not possible without him. That's right. And so get out of possible. Yeah. If you don't get anything else, get out of what's what makes sense. Yeah. Get out of get I don't I'm just going to challenge everybody that's listening to this. Just do something today in prayer that doesn't make sense. Go pray yes. and believe yes. for something pray that's just that's prayer. just impossible. Yes. Go pray and ask God for something that's beyond what you could do or any other man could do. Yes. And just see how God starts to move. Don't just, you know, don't let it be where, you know, it's like you're just trying to, you know, throw something on the wall and see if it sticks. But pray in faith, yeah. pray in confidence, and just see what God can do. And don't consider the impossibility. No. Don't even consider it. Don't let any thought come in your mind. Don't let any voice don't stagger. speak to you that brings uh, unbelief. Don't stagger with unbelief. Just be fully convinced and don't consider the impossibility and see what God does. And look up. I mean, you got 8,000 and something promises in there. Look up some of those promises and start declaring them over your life and over your family, over your children, over your job, over your home, over this nation, over the world. You start declaring and decreeing some promises and don't stagger with unbelief, but be fully convinced fully convinced god's gonna do great things yes he will amen i'm excited me too let's i'm ready do let's, let's do something impossible yeah. right, let's ask god for something impossible amen. let's, let's just see what he does you have been listening to in the loft and we're so thankful that you've joined us don't forget to like and subscribe share help us get the word out it helps us so much and a five-star rating would be awesome yes please god bless you and we'll see you or talk to you next time on in the loft bye